What is up guys, we're going to be answering the question, what is DOM based XSS? And specifically, how is it different from reflected XSS? So we're going to be using this lab and the instructions are as follows. To solve this lab, perform a cross site scripting attack that calls the alert function. So let's fire up the lab. It's a type of blog and we have a form input here where we can search the blog. So let's search for something that's going to be unique and easy to find when we browse the document object model. With Firefox, we can pull up the developer pane with Control Shift and I. And this inspector tab is the DOM browser. So what we're seeing here is the document object model. Now, if we're familiar with programming languages such as JavaScript, for example, we probably have an idea of what an object is. Now the document object model is not JavaScript, but it can be manipulated by JavaScript. Now let's say a page is set up to manipulate the DOM in a certain way. And by our input, we can corrupt the way that the JavaScript is manipulating the DOM. Now we have a DOM based cross site scripting attack. Now this particular page output is useful in understanding that because it actually displays our search term twice as part of the document object model. Let's just search for Zen shell and you'll see that it appears twice as part of the document object model. The first occurrence we can see inside a H1 tag. And this is very likely being returned as part of the direct HTTP response from the page. Let's say, for example, we were able to inject a script tag here. It's actually part of the HTTP response from the page. So it's a reflected cross site scripting attack. Let's take a look at the second occurrence of this search term in the DOM. And we can see it here. It's actually inside an image tag before the closure of this specific tag. Now, how did it get there? Notice just above this, we have a script tag. This is JavaScript. Okay, what is this JavaScript doing? So it's defining a function. The function is called track search and it receives a parameter query. This function calls document.write. Document.write is part of the way that JavaScript manipulates the DOM. It's going to write whatever is in that parameter for the document write function to the DOM. So what is it writing? It's writing an image source tag. Sound familiar? We've just seen that rendered to the DOM. Image source, resources, images, tracker.gif, question mark. So we're getting into the query string now. Search terms equals query. So where is this query from? Well, it defines it next. It says variable query equals new it's got this URL search params, which is a built in JavaScript class. And it's calling its constructor function with the parameter window.location.search. Window.location.search is anything after the question mark in the URL bar at the top of the page. So at the moment that just reads search equals Zen shell. So URL search params is going to take that string search equals Zen shell. And it's already coded with logic to break that down into key value pairs. What we can then do is take that newly constructed JavaScript URL search params object, and then call the dot get method on it, which we see happening next. And really what that's asking the object to do is to find the value that has the key search. And in this case, the result is going to be Zen shell. So the end result here is that the variable query is assigned to the string Zen shell. We then have a conditional. It says if query, and we know there's a query because it's just been assigned. It's going to call that defined function track search, and it's going to pass the param query, which is the string Zen shell in this case. So it's definitely going to get called and it's going to document write that image tag to the DOM and it's going to include Zen shell. 
as the search terms param of that image source. So that's why we have image source equals resources, images, tracker.gif. Then we have the question mark indicating the beginning of the query string and we have search terms equals Zenshell. So we can see that both instances of that search term Zenshell have arrived as part of the page in different ways. The first instance of Zenshell was sent as part of the direct HTTP response to our request. The second ends up in a more roundabout way because it first has to be included or written to the DOM using this JavaScript document.write function. So if we attack the response as part of the direct HTTP response, that's going to be reflected cross site scripting. If we attack the way that this JavaScript is manipulating the DOM, now that's going to be a DOM based cross site scripting attack. So let's do that right now. Now the first step in this is to consider the context. Where in the DOM is Zenshell being displayed? Well, it's part of the source attribute of the image tag. Now, what if we could break out of that source attribute and give the image tag a second attribute? For example, on load equals alert. So that once that image has loaded, it then runs the alert function. Let's see if we can do that. So we'll type our search term. We're going to include a double quote to break out of that specific attribute. Then we're going to start defining a new attribute. Onload equals JavaScript function alert, which was the goal of the lab. And if you think about it, that trailing double quote is already going to be included because it originally wrapped or concluded that source tag. So we can actually delete the trailing double quote there. Okay, let's search for this, see what happens. And notice we get the alert pop up to the page, which indicates a successful cross-site scripting attack. So a little bit of post analysis here. Let's take a look at what's happened to the DOM. So if we inspect the DOM and we have a look at what's happened here, we've got image source equals, it ends with Zen shell. Then we have our trailing double quote. And then look at this, we've injected an additional attribute to that image via JavaScript's document.write function. So this wasn't part of the original HTTP response to the page. This was actually a change that was made to the DOM based on the fact that that JavaScript executes once the page has loaded. And we can prove that if we have a look at the page source and search for Zenshell. We can see that initial mention of Zenshell inside that H1 tag. That's part of the direct HTTP response from the server. We even have the JavaScript here, but we don't see that second mention of Zenshell as part of the page because view source doesn't show DOM manipulations. It just shows the original HTML that's sent from the server. The changes are tracked in the DOM but they're not reflected to the HTML of the page when we view source. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm hoping that after watching this, you have a really clear understanding of the difference between DOM-based XSS, reflected XSS, and how to execute a DOM-based XSS attack. Thanks for watching, guys.